I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, we're telling the story of how we got robbed here in our beautiful home in Leon, Nicaragua. I, I know you would never believe it could happen, and I think you're gonna be interested in how it could happen. Even though we have all this great security, we're gonna get to that right after the bump. I know you're shocked and these things do happen. So don't worry, everyone's okay. I got some beautiful time in the garden here, but I'm gonna show you some of the security we have because some people who watch the video, especially if you're watching some of my videos about security here in Nicaragua, we keep saying that it is an incredibly secure country where you don't have to worry about violent crime and you don't. I mean, everyone has to worry. Some don't act like there's zero violent crime. That would be crazy, right? But it's really, really, really little. But whenever we talk about it, people, especially Americans, love to point out that they see razor wire going on on top of all the walls. Or if you're not seeing that, we're just gonna show a couple different things, right? But they all serve in the same purpose, right? But they're commonly different things. So we got these spike fences here. I hope you can see this. They spike in a couple different directions. Now this is a lower wall, um, all steel, I think, and uh, pretty easy to physically get over if you're for just talking about height. Uh, but there's a lot of visibility, right? We've got, uh, I've actually got a guard station right here. I don't know if you can see it through the tree. So I'm standing right next to our security guard who's not in, Oh, he's not in sight. I thought maybe he'd be in the video. And um, so, but like the neighbors can see in here. So if you were to sneak over this wall, you, the neighbors would be looking at you. The guard would be right there, like an open window. Like there's, and, and often they're standing, there's a, there's a gate here. So these, you don't have to worry about too much because of the super high visibility. And now this, there's actually pretty good visibility over here too. This may be overkill, but so there's razor wire up here, goes all the way down there. And uh, there's also electrical up there, but you don't necessarily need electrical. I generally don't recommend that because that's a good way for things to get hurt. So normally that will be off, right? But a, a lot of places do have electrical uh, as, as an extreme measure. But this is not where things happen. We're just showing, because you see this in the videos and people don't understand it. I talk about this a lot. So I'm gonna show you the house itself to help explain why this is so important and why this is an indication of how safe it is here. We got some great clouds today. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous day. So let's go show some of the security measures that exist if you want them. So on a normal house, you're going to have on a lot of doors, you're gonna have these bars as an extra thing. This allows you to leave the door behind it open anytime that you want and you just have to lock the outside. That way you can have the choice of open for walking in and out or open for just air. And that's pretty important because we like to be open a lot here. We're gonna come back to the main door in a second, but we're gonna show all the windows. And this is true true everywhere in Nicaragua. Like this is not a unique structure. Windows have bars on them. So getting in through windows, very, very, very hard. Not something you're ever going to have to worry about. No one's ever going to break in through those. That is not a thing. This is standard the world over because we don't use screens and we don't have glass on them normally. They're wide open all the time. You want these open while you're sleeping, right? So it's not normal to want to lock these down by closing them, but you do need to have some security because otherwise you're sleeping in a place where even animals, let alone people, can just come and go. So you gotta be careful a little bit, right? So that is a standard everywhere. Now, the front door, notice, this is normal. Our door is open. Why is it open? One, wind, that, and it's a beautiful day. Our dogs like to come and go all the time. So that's important, but most people leave their doors open. This is standard everywhere. You walk through the city, people right on the sidewalk will have their doors wide open. That seems crazy to people in North America, for example, where you're terrified of people coming in and like, you know, robbing you and murdering you in your house or whatever. And that's not really a fear here, right? Violent crime basically doesn't happen. So all of our security measures of, of any earnest are designed around petty crime, not violent crime. To an American who's used to strong measures like keeping their house closed all the time, and I know that sounds like you're like, Scott, that's not a security measure. I just don't want my house open. Why don't you want your house open? Well, I guess because people just go, okay, I get it, right? So that's a security measure that we don't have to take, that very few people in Nicaragua feel the need to take. If you live in the middle of Managua, yeah, the being open to the street gets a little bit weird at some point. So there's, you know, I'm not saying everybody keeps the door open, but you go through Leon, my neighbors, they would just have their doors wide open all through the day. You can look right in, you can step right in, right? And people sometimes do, like you just come in, you poke your head in, you yell. It's what people do. And that's one of the reasons that people do that is because things are so wide open and we like living this outdoor windy lifestyle. So, so all those security measures, when people are looking at the barbed wire, you're looking at these spikes like on the fence here, why do we have all of those? Because we're so safe. We're not worried about violent crime. Someone who wants to murder us, they're going to come right over that. That's not going to stop them, right? That is not a 
deterrent to a major crime. That is a deterrent to petty crime. And I know it looks like it's a lot, but we're able to leave the door open. That's what you use to stop violent crime is you don't let them into your house because they're coming in with a weapon or multiple people or organization, something that you're not going to be able to stop easily, right? And even in the U.S., that's going to be people kicking down the door or whatever. That's why you have alarms and, and things that automatically call the police really quickly because you need people with weapons to be there very quickly to protect you. Here, what we want to do is make it inconvenient to try to come in and steal anything and to slow them down so that you're much less likely to be able to get in, get something and get out before the occupants of the house have seen you, before a dog has caught you, before the security guard has caught you or whatever. So these are actually symbols of just how safe it is. Nowhere reasonably are you ever going to live where you need no security measures, none at all, where your entire house and all your possessions are just open to the street and any random person can walk in and out without the slightest effort. And these kinds of things take essentially no effort. This is how the fences are made, because basically no one wants a fence with nothing, so this is what they do. And if you go around the United States, you're going to find millions of places that have fences that have spikes on top and make it a little bit hard to get in. That's all we've got here. These are just the tiniest bit more. And, and here we use razor wire and broken glass because they're cheap. And in the U.S., you tend to use ornamental metal because it, it's more costly and looks nicer. That is the reason why you see so much of those things here. They're just really inexpensive. They are practical measures to dealing with something that Americans just pay more in most circumstances to look better. I'll admit I prefer the American method on that, but I totally appreciate how cheaply you're able to secure places here. So when you see those things, the first thing you should think is, ah, these are, these are people who are able to live with their doors open. They're so safe but they can't be completely ridiculous and leave absolutely everything just open. These are symbols of our safety. But now you've been wondering, what about us getting robbed and how could this happen given these safety measures? Well, let me take you back and show you exactly what happened. All right, I'm here in the back garden and laundry area. Now, James asked the state of the garden after they had hacked the crap out of our plants. And you can see they've grown back pretty quickly now that it's the rainy season. We do get them to come back pretty quickly. So that is a thing here in Nicaragua. I don't know that I agree with it, but they take these bushes and they whack them down to basically no leaves and just let them grow back. It seems to work, but... Okay, so we're at this remote laundry area. This is a very distant part of the house complex. And you can see we still hang things up, right? We're Nicaraguans, that's what we do. And, uh, but we do have a full laundry. We do, you know, people are like, can you get washer and dryer? Yeah, we've got a washer and dryer. We don't use the dryer if we don't need to. It's the rainy season, so we do need to use it a little bit. But we, we try to hang things up when we can and we're a little bit practical, but we try to, try to split the difference. There are times you really wanna have a dryer or your clothes could get musty because if it's a really rainy day and you can see, you know, definitely there's potential for some rain out there. We're going in and out of the clouds here. But so this area is protected by mostly broken glass, which is a deterrent, but it's only so much of a, of a deterrent. Uh, now it goes all, almost all the way around, but it doesn't actually go all the way around. So it's mostly there for show and to make it just a little bit less convenient to pop in, but it's not going to actually stop anybody, but it definitely makes it a little bit harder, but there's so many different places that you could potentially come in. So we're gonna uh, show some of that, but uh, I want you to understand that that's, that's really what there is, and this is a really remote area, and if no one is home or people are asleep, this is pretty far from the house, and the chances that someone will hear something gets a little bit low. So we've, we're putting in some additional practical safety measures, including some um, sound, like audible alarms and lights. So if someone comes back here when it's, it should be isolated, they will get a surprise, and our security guards will see the lights come on and stuff, and they can come investigate. So let's show, though, what, so because, notice, we're just outside, like I'm standing, but first of all, this is gorgeous. I love the sky. Hopefully it doesn't blow out from the sun hitting the lens directly. Um, but so this is, we have, right? Uh, hopefully you can see. Now these are cat litter boxes, but we fill them with detergent. And the reason that we do that, I'm going to step into the shadows here so that we're not quite so terrible in the light. And the reason that we do that is because you go to Managua and you buy detergent in large volume and that lowers the price some. And that's a good idea, right? And uh, let me see, if I turn around, do we get this beautiful sky behind me while I'm talking? Oh, we do. Now that I'm in the shadows, I might be a little bit dark, but I'm, I'm, liking, I'm liking that sky there. And so we buy in large bulk 
in Managua, and we come here with the, the detergent. Actually, let's head to the front yard. Why stand back here now that we've shown things? All right, a little bit better light here in the garden area. So uh, what is, so you're gonna say, I know, why would someone steal detergent? Someone, are you seriously saying someone broke into your house, took a risk, because obviously you could get cut, you could get caught, you could get stuck, you could whatever, right? Bad things can happen when you're breaking into someone's house. Why would someone do this for laundry detergent? Well, let me explain. We go to Managua and we buy these large volume of it. So these are relatively expensive things of detergent just because they're big. And we pour bags into those those old kitty litter boxes. That's just to explain why we have those. It protects it from the, the elements a bit more because they stay outside. Why would we bring that into the house when the laundry is way out there? That just seems sensible. But it is then exposed, it is left completely outside. And this is what I talk about, right? When we're talking about petty crimes, leaving things outside means someone has ample opportunity to sneak over a wall, spend some time, look around, take a very dim flashlight that doesn't draw attention, figure out what's there and take off with it. And what we found, what we believe was happening is people were coming in with bags, emptying those laundry detergents into bags, probably had an accomplice who helped them pull it up the wall and taking off with it. But you're still gonna say, but it's laundry detergent, Scott, this makes no sense. Okay. so those large volumes of laundry detergent. So first of all, it's very high quality. It's like arm and hammer. It's not crazy. Like it's not like exclusive, but this is like what you would get from the grocery store, but in large volume. And that's about $40 here. Now it's really large volume. So, <laughs> um, and if you were to take that, we estimate, and you put it into like little sandwich bags, and this is going to be crazy. You're going to be like, I've never heard of anyone doing this. And you go to the market, the real markets, not the, not the supermarket, but the markets where people just set up a stall and sell things. People will sell little tiny sandwich bags of laundry detergent and things like that because people can't afford or be difficult to afford getting a large volume like we do. So they can't get the volume discounts that we do. They have to get it in these smaller quantities. So they pay easily twice as much per volume. So if if that is, you know, $40, there may be $42 servings that they're able to sell out of that. So someone who steals that $40 of laundry detergent might be able to sell it for $80. Well, that suddenly is stealing $80. Like that's, that's a real value for someone. I can, when you consider that an average person who is working full time, that's 48 hours a week with commuting and all the stress that goes with going to a job, that's full time. They're going to bring home, if they're unskilled labor, of course, 200 to 250 dollars a month and there are situations where you can earn less than that uh, we've talked about like some teachers could be bringing home less than that so so these are you know realistic numbers that that is kind of the best that a lot of people can hope for and when you say well 80 dollars just hopping over a wall grab and, and a lot of people can't get those jobs right there's a lot of unemployment so even if they found work right 200 to 250 a month is what some people have to live on and so if you're dealing with Someone who's out of work, struggling to hopefully find $200 a month, but can't right now. And you have two people who are like that, <clears throat> and they think that they may have found a source of laundry detergent. Sneaking over the wall and stealing that for their family could represent possibly even in excess of one third of a month's salary just by stealing laundry detergent. And let's be fair, stealing laundry detergent from someone with a large house who is foreign, who has an outside income and is clearly inconvenienced, but not significantly damaged by it. It is easy to see why someone would take the opportunity to steal some laundry detergent if it's going to make a big difference. And that's why laundry detergent is something. So it can't be traced. Um, it's, it's easy to not get caught. Like in very, very few circumstances, would we notice that someone had taken the laundry detergent? In reality, we think maybe it's been going on for a while. We got some good thunder all of a sudden. Wow. Clear skies, but thunder, that's one of my favorites because it means a good storm's rolling in. We're going to have some changes in the, in the sky. Coming, I love the afternoon storms here. I've recorded a few good ones recently. I'll get the cameras ready to try to grab one today. And uh, uh, <clears throat> so it's a type of thing that if you steal it, it's it's very hard to like go to the police and get them like really worked up about stealing soap. Like, okay, but they stole soap. Like, let's let's just <laughs> let's just calm down, people. Sure, they shouldn't do it, but it's soap. Um, and you know, there was no violence, there was no threats. It was completely like no one knew. And they probably took some, and then later came back and took some more. The only reason we even noticed 
was because my wife has been doing the laundry. Normally someone else does it, but we had a change of staff and she's been doing that. And so she's like, wait, I know I didn't do any laundry in the last two days. Why is this gone? And uh, if you have someone that you hired to do your laundry, um, they may not want to tell you that your laundry soap is going through too quickly because maybe they'll be blamed for it. You don't want to mention it because maybe you're just wrong. Maybe the person who owns the house is using it as well and you just don't realize it. Like, why would you bring it up? And maybe you're just not paying attention to it because you're not the one buying the detergent. So why do you care? And so it's really easy in a lot of circumstances for something like soap to disappear in small amounts and no one to notice or no one to figure out what's happened or never get caught. There's just it's a, actually a very low risk type of crime once you stop and think about it and one that just no one believes for the most part and uh uh but it actually potentially has enough money tied to it that especially if you can find a place where they never notice and you just steal over time someone could make a living out of robbing just two or three maybe four houses of soap or something like soap that they have laying around outside and no one notices and, and they could sneak in and siphon fuel out of the car, for all you know, right? Simple things like that. If, if your car is available, right, leave your stuff locked. Just don't leave it wide open because little things like that could go missing. And we do know that someone once broke into our car and stole a pack of cigarettes, right? They did no damage. The car was unlocked. They just, they got in and were like, oops, cigarettes. And that's what they took. Petty crime is is a thing that's going to happen. And something that uh, I think people miss is that in the absence of violent crime, petty crime takes over. Where you have lots of violent crime, you don't tend to have petty crime. So the United States, for example, you tend to have violent crime, but not petty crime. Why? Well, for one, petty crime tends to have really large repercussions, especially if you're risking getting caught. So if you want to break into someone's house in the United States and steal some laundry detergent, factors are totally different. One, even even the the people robbing you, the cost of that laundry detergent is very low for for them for anybody. So no one cares about the cost of laundry detergent. No one's going to be able to make money reselling it or anything like that. So it's a worthless thing to steal, like anything in that category. So petty crimes just don't have the same value there. Also, if you were to break into someone's house to steal laundry detergent, here you're essentially safe. You might get caught. You've got some risks, but those risks are relatively low. In the United States, the chances that you break into someone's house and are not met with violent or deadly force, relatively low. I mean, you could rob a lot of houses and never run into someone, but your chances of getting killed while doing that are very real. And your chances of getting caught and going directly to jail, very real. Here, all those things would be much more difficult. The police will definitely try to catch them, but it's soap. And it was outside, right? Like, it's a completely different thing. Also, in the United States, you got to break in through the doors. Like, everything's locked. Everything's closed up because people are scared because there is violent crime. Here, everything's open. Everything's easy. If you were to try to get into the house, yes, we lock it up at night, obviously. But uh, uh, the, the, the whole, like, you don't need to do that, right? In the United States, you'd have to break down the door. Here, you'd, almost everyone has something outside. That's what they're going to go for. And, uh, of course, if you were to... Uh, steal something minor here, you get into a lot of trouble, not with the police, but someone figures out it's you, what are they going to do? No one's going to go commit an act of violence because someone took some soap. But in the United States, someone finds out you've been stealing their soap, they may come and do something to you, right? They may hire someone to do something to you. Just the, the violence makes petty crime scary. If you're going to bother committing a crime in a place that has a lot of violent crime, you're just going to opt for violent crime because the risk reward payoff is far better. Here, the risk reward says petty crime has very low risk and violent crime has very high risk. The United States, violent crime also has high risk, but not as high risk. But petty crime has nearly all the same risk as violent crime. So why bother with petty crime? Just go to violent crime. It pay, that's how you get the big scores, right? You need to steal a car, not some soap. And so, but to steal a car, you got to threaten somebody. So it's a completely different environment because of that balance. Here, the balance goes to petty crime, just like in like Germany. In Germany, you really have to worry about like pickpockets. Same thing in Italy, right? I was in Italy. It's one time I've ever had my pocket picked. Guy stole my wallet, took all the cash, walked outside. And as soon as he was far enough away, he couldn't get caught, just whipped my wallet at me. So I got my wallet back immediately. It was without my, my reach for maybe 30 seconds. And all he got was the cash in it. Honestly, that was a pretty good interaction. As far as thieves go, that guy was great. Good customer service, nice guy, probably just needed to feed his family, like whatever. It makes for a good story. Guy stealing the soap here, a little bit less convenient. I don't like him coming into my house area. We got to do something about that, and we are. But, you know, again, generally not a terrible experience for getting robbed. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, I have friends in the United States who have been robbed. 
And what was their robbery experience like? Well, they were taken at gunpoint. The family was tied up and left there. They were stuck for a very long time, tied up as the people robbed their entire house of all their possessions, took everything. And so not only did they lose an incredible amount of stuff, they also lost the day as they were tied up and terrified and had their lives threatened. Now, were those people actually going to shoot them? I'm sure not, right? But they had weapons and they threatened their lives in order to get a TV. These are real friends of mine that I, you know, I've never known someone in the United States who had petty theft like having soap stealing, stolen, but I do know people who have violently had their houses robbed. Here, it's the opposite. I don't know people who've been violently robbed, but I know people who've had some soap stolen. So, different world, and that is why you see these simple measures to make it inconvenient to just hop the fence and grab some stuff because we're willing to leave our stuff outside, we're willing to leave our doors open, and we have that degree of safety to allow us to do so. So thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. That's our story. Get down and ask your questions. I will see all of you tomorrow.